Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Unfortunately, we don't have time to fix my Mercury Mystique. We got another problem. The heat in the house is broken. Uh-oh. <laughs> Let's go inside and take a look. Sixty-four degrees out, not super warm. Good thing we got a backup fireplace over there. So that's putting out some heat. But this thing, it's a heat pump. And recently on warm mornings, we've been getting system malfunction. The thing says system malfunction and well, it doesn't really uh, blow any warm air into the house. So to get into the diagnostic of this, you hold the advanced button down for 10 seconds. We're going into the advanced mode. And all right, we're in. Go to the service menu, select, and here we have our menu. So let's look at last 10 system events. So we have this code 56, temp sensor out of range. Code 83, low pressure lockout, 4 hours. Code 32, low pressure switch open. And the other ones, don't pay attention to those. I'll tell you about them later. So three codes, right? Well, first thing, temp sensor out of range. Well, what do you think that is? I looked it up, did research online. Uh... There's two thermistors on this unit. One is for outdoor temperature, which you saw there, you know, is outdoor temp 36 degrees or whatever. And the other one is on the actual fan coil. So we can go to, or rather, the heat pump. So the fan coil is inside your house, it's in the basement, that's a heat exchanger. And then the heat pump itself is outside of the house, that's another heat exchanger. So let's select that. So here you have your values. And right here, coil temp 34. So that's the other thermistor reading. And when it says temp sensor out of range, well, it read fine when I checked it. I mean, intermittent fault. Fire the parts cannon. Ba boom. Uh, I'll show you what I replaced. This guy right here. It's a thermistor pair, factory part. See, there's one thermistor, two thermistors. That's the outdoor temp, that's the actual coil temp. Now, about six years ago, we actually had a fault with one of the sensors. I think the outdoor temp wasn't reading, and it wasn't happy, so replace that, problem solved. Six years later, I'm like, well, things probably crapped out again, so replaced it no beans we still have a problem so let's diagnose this together and hopefully we get the heat back on because you know it's getting cold outside alright so back to the diagnostic menu let's select run fault history and under heat pump select resettable faults now I clear these out they had the same, you know, three faults in there. Now if we back out, so the game plan is to turn the system on, go outside to the outdoor unit, and see what the heck is going on out there. See if it's all working. So, you know, back out, exit, we're turn on the heat. So it's trying to warm up to 66, 64 inside, 36 outside. Let's go outside. So here's the outdoor unit. We can hear something buzzing inside. That's a compressor. However, the fan is not working. And for this thing to be, you know, efficient, the compressor, when a compressor is working, the fan also has to work, just like in your car. Uh, you know, to enable the heat transfer, because the coils are all the way around. You can see the, the fins there. So this is starting to make sense. If the fan does not work, then our coils get too cold. 
and then the low pressure switch trips and we got the faults and that would explain the temp sensor out of range as well. So I got the panel off here for the control box and well we have a whole bunch of stuff <laughs> so we have to figure out why the fan is not kicking on. That's going to be the diagnosis. So we have to look up a wiring diagram and familiarize ourselves with the system before we start poking in this thing. This is 240 volt, you know, single phase, so you definitely don't want to touch the wrong thing and make some sparks. Let's go look at the wiring diagram. So this is that cover for the control box. And awesome, we have a nice wiring diagram here with a legend and fault code descriptions. This is very nice of the manufacturer to include this. So let's see where we're going. Right there, that guy is our fan. We see three wires on it. There's a capacitor. And then it hooks up to, this is the main control board. And here's our main power feeds. L1, L2, and you know the case ground so before digging into this we have to know what you know what is L1 and L2 how does 240 volt phase power work single phase rather and then we can understand this wiring diagram because this is not a car it's not just 12 volts power and ground there's there's basically two powers <laughs> right and it's alternating current so, you know, I know a little bit about alternating current, but we got to go online and do a little research first. All right, so here is basically the house. So we have two lines coming in, hot one and hot two, and neutral. And on this transformer that is, you know, far away from the house, we have three wires attached to this output transformer coil. Now, it says 120 volts, and when you add two times 120, you get 240. Okay, so there should be 240 volts across these two lines, and 120 each on these two. Now, what is the actual phase? You know, what does the wave look like? Because if we use a voltmeter across it, what do we expect to see? Well, I found this diagram right here. You have phase one, and phase two, and it says phase one minus phase two. So instead of adding them, if you add them, they'll equal zero. But if you subtract them, you get the larger sine wave, which is 240. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, just real quick, I sketched it out just to kind of make myself understand. So here's our transformer coil, L1, neutral, and L2. And let's say this dotted line represents just one of the wires, the difference between L1 and neutral. That's what I wrote here. The dotted line is L1 minus N. And if you carry your voltmeter leads across the other half of the winding, you get N minus L2. And that, those should equal each other. Right, you're just cutting the coil in half. The potential difference should be exactly in phase. So that's why I drew just one dotted line for both L1 minus N and N minus L2. Now, what happens if we put our voltmeter across L1 and L2? So L1 minus L2 would be the first measurement that we made, L1 minus N, right, plus the second measurement that we made, N minus L2. All right, that plus that. We're measuring the voltage now across the whole thing. And look at the math. The N cancels out. We have negative N, positive N, and then we have L1 minus L2. Bingo. That makes perfect sense. So that's single phase, you know, two wire power. So that's what's coming in on our wiring diagram. 
right here, there's L1 and L2. Now how does it make it to the motor? So the motor has three wires connected to it. There's a fan capacitor here. The yellow comes to, it's labeled L2, and if we follow that back, it goes right through this contact to L2. So that's constantly powered, this guy right here. So this side, this terminal of the motor is L2. What about the black wire? The black wire just goes to our control board. Now to make this motor run, well what do we, you know, it's three wires, how does it exactly work? Well, let's research that a little bit. So this is the key, knowing your enemy before diving in. There's the standard single phase AC induction motor. So you see two inputs and this capacitor. So on the diagram, you know, this line here is basically one wire. And then this is two and that's three. So here we're going to have either 120 or 240. It's just the amplitude that's different. It's still just one phase. <clears throat> so this would be our yellow wire, right? We pull up our diagram. See the yellow wire is connected to both the capacitor and a motor winding. So that's the first input line. Then, let's see here. Then there's two windings inside the motor. Okay? So just across the yellow and black, there's one winding. That would be our main winding. Then the second winding, right here, goes right to this capacitor. That is, on this diagram, the auxiliary winding. See, it goes from here to our capacitor. And finally, the other side of the capacitor is tied into, into the yellow, so L2. So basically, back is going to be L1. It's called ODF on this diagram, and yellow is L2. So what do we do in terms of testing with this guy? Now make sure your voltmeter is rated to AC, so he says 250 volt max. So we're safe to use this meter on this system. We simply want to test when the compressor is running and when the fan is supposed to be on. We want to test, you know, from yellow to black. We're supposed to have 240 volt AC right there. Let's do that test right now. Alright, here we go. Get our voltmeter set up. Put on volts AC. So you guys can see what I'm doing here. It's kind of raining and snowing out here. Not a good time to lose the heat. First thing I'm going to do is check across the white and the black, that should be the two phases there, and we see 230 volts AC. I don't know if you guys can see that. Put this meter. So you guys see the reading? So I'm just testing the input line power, it's coming in right here, those two guys, 230, okay, that's just a check. Now the fan, where does it go? Here's the black wire, here's ODF, that's one input, then we have the yellow coming into our fan capacitor into L2. So there's L2, there's the yellow, and it goes up to our, right here. Let's see, L2. 
on the fan capacitor. Cool. So we want to check voltage across L2 and ODF right now. Make sure the reading's in the picture. Something's cooling down and expanding. ODF and L2, zero volts. Now what if we check L2 to ground? That should be 120, there it is. And then ODF to ground, that's also 120. But across L2 and ODF, we have zero volts. That's why our fan is not running. So basically, I wanna disconnect this guy. Watch me get zapped. I don't wanna mess around with that. So now this black wire is coming from the fan. And if we measure from L2 to ODF without that connected, 11.7 volts. I don't like it. I think our board is bad. So what can we do to this wire to make sure the fan works right now? Well, connect it to L1. And L1 is right here on the board, it's a purple. Or we can connect it to uh, let's see here, where else is L1? So that's the violet, that's L1. It comes from this switch that's kind of also connected to a black. So that's this guy over here. See the violet and the black are coming from the same spot. So this black wire from the fan, I'm gonna touch, since we did our research, I'm gonna touch it to here and see if the fan kicks on. There it goes. It's turning. Can you hear it? See all the steam coming out? That's what's supposed to happen. Oh, it's shaking. Woo! So that verifies that the fan works, correct? However, there's no control. This board, for some reason, is not feeding L1 on that ODF VLK terminal. How's that for a diagnosis? I'm not even uh, an HVAC repair guy. <laughs> Just looking at diagrams. So, what I want to do is turn the whole system off, shut down the breaker, and get this board out of here and figure out why we're not getting L1, the purple, to this ODF. There should be a switch. I think it's this guy right here. It's a relay. Because you can follow the traces. See, L1 goes into there. And then ODF should get turned on by this relay. So, it's a board problem or a control side problem, but you know, it could be, we have to check this relay for control and operation. So it could be a bad relay, it could be a control side problem as well. So it's not connecting V10 and BLK for some reason. Uh, well, let's go from there. Alright, fuse box. Oh, let's see here, H2O pump. Indoor unit, outdoor unit, so 30 and 32. I mean, we can shut both of them off. 30 and 32, 34, 36. So off and off. Everything's powered down. Let's see if it's uh, inactive. Yep, our screen went blank. Alright guys, I got the board off of the unit. It is Crusty and dirty. Visual inspection on the back side. I don't like that. Look at that trace. Lift it up. Copper's gone. Is that our guy? Is that the problem? So let's see. That's the red. Not the black. 
and that goes to that pin over there. So again, that's part of the relay, I think. I mean, high current circuits on a circuit board, not a good idea, ever. Soldered in relays, not a good idea. So, we can see it's a five pin relay, one, two, three, four, five. That leg is obviously shot. There's, there's the copper trace. What is the red? <sighs> Let's see here. The red pin goes to let's see up here, here, here to this CCH, and the other side of that goes to our line two CCH crankcase heater. So apparently that wasn't working. However, it doesn't explain why our fan wasn't working. So we have to still find what controls the fan or what controls the relay. The, the fan control obviously does go to this relay. You can kind of follow the trace. It goes to this corner pin it looks like and the crankcase heater goes to the other pin. Now I assume Can you see that? Does that relay, so it should connect L1 to black, okay, and also L1 to the red. So that crankcase heater needs both L1 and L2 to function. So maybe this relay is cooked. And the circuit board's bad. So maybe the easiest thing is to look up the circuit board by the part number there that's the part number and get a new one or if we're really desperate look up this relay it's a Potter and Brumfield Austria 12 amp 240 volt you can see the, that writing on there Let's see if it clicks and if at least we can, I don't know, energize it with whatever other voltage is used. Obviously all these little components run on DC, so there should be some kind of voltage uh, regulator on here to actually control this relay. Now does it say on here? Oh, it does say 24 volt DC. So. We need 24 volts to turn this relay on, okay, and can we tell where that relay is powered and ground side switched? Looks like there's the trace uh, right there, it goes to this R58. Component level repairs, always fun. And where does the other leg go? Can we see through the circuit board? Not really. Where does the other leg go? Does it go to that little guy? Power transistor perhaps? I mean we can again power this thing up and stab that and that and see if the relay is being switched on, we need this thing powered up to actually do any testing on it. Uh, let me uh, think of a solution. Maybe look up the board, see if uh, how much it costs. All right, did a little digging. So that's the part number CEPL one three zero six one eight dash zero three. And obviously, first thing that came up was eBay. <laughs> Uh, they're all pre-owned, they're all used, but, you know, let's see what a new one goes for. So these are like 120, there's 65, 120, 200. 
brand new ones. I mean, this is close. 04, 06A. I don't know if they're all exactly the same or what cross reference is what. 550 bucks. They really got you by the you know what there. So I found a picture of that relay. The RT114024F and it looks like this contact is normally closed and when the relay switches it turns on our fan. And this is the burned out leg on our circuit board. And if you see so if that's burned out we won't have any current flow going to this bottom pin right here and in this case that's our L1 so we won't be feeding our uh, crankcase heater. Now I wonder if there's a monitoring circuit on that guy or not. I wasn't setting a code for it and I don't think there is. Basically the question now is it the relay or is it the control? What's the easiest way to check? We could plug everything in and just kinda set it there and measure across these two pins see if there's 24 volts See if, see if the relay is energized. We can manually energize them. However, I still don't know which one's positive, which one's negative. And if we connect it the wrong way, you could fry something else on this board. And I don't want to damage it any uh, any more than you know than it already is. All right. So my plan is to just desolder the five pins of the relay, so we don't or anything on the board by testing it on the board then we'll go over there to our voltage supply and test the relay and if it's the relay that's bad we'll replace it if it's not we'll either figure out what's wrong with the board or replace the whole shebang so we're going to use our Hacko desoldering FR300 this thing I wish I had it for the eyeglass edger repair. Let's see if we can set this guy up here. So it should be hot. Just gonna go on the pins. We can hear the vacuum. Should be it. Let's see here. Unless this thing is like glued in place or something. Now that, that guy right there is still the solder down there. Bingo. Here it is. Let's take it to our voltage supply.